Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This week's video is about a do-it-yourself argon dryer. Now, everybody's heard of air compressor dryers for painting and for plasma cutters, but not everybody's aware that sometimes you need an argon dryer, too. Sometimes argon gets moisture in it, especially the owner's bottles, because I get a lot of emails talking about this. See that beard growing on the tip of that electrode? You know, sometimes you're welding along, you know you prepped the electrode right, you know the electrode's clean, you didn't dip, your metal's clean, but you grow fuzz, you grow whiskers on the tip of the electrode, and you don't know why. Well, one, that's, a, that's a, a symptom of having moisture in the argon. And it's not the end of the world, but it's definitely not a good thing. I worked a job one time, they got such a problem with moisture content in the argon, they issued dryers to everybody. It's kind of like what we're making today. So this is off-the-shelf stuff, one-inch clear braided reinforced tubing, some one-inch plugs, barbed fittings, and uh, just plastic stuff. And they didn't quite have enough material, so I added a little JB weld in there so I could get a good drill and threaded hole. I don't want the thing blowing out on me. So I just mixed up some JB weld and added another quarter inch in there where I could drill and tap and have plenty of room for threads for these barbed fittings. This is just off-the-shelf stuff you can get at any Home Depot. You can order it on Amazon, eBay, whatnot. I'm letting you, letting you uh, see the part numbers and everything. Regular standard hose clamps that uh, will, are big enough to fit around that one-inch clear braided tubing. And then I drilled and tapped these. I actually think that it would be possible to just drill them and then heat up the barb fittings and then uh, kind of screw them in while they're hot, too. But I decided to drill and tap. And I put these little screens in there to make sure the desiccant doesn't cause a problem getting in the argon line, getting up in the machine. I had to knock these little tabs off here so that the uh, barbs would go in the tube and it would seal really well. And it was a really tight fit. Mashed them all the way in there and cranked down the hose clamps. A little Teflon tape on these tapered pipe threads and put those in. You could do that at any time at the very end or whatever. I'm freeze framing here so you can see where I got this stuff from, the silica gel. And that's it. I'm going to splice it. I'm going to cut that green argon line and use some smaller hose clamps about six inches down from the uh, flow meter. And so that I can I'll have a little pigtail so that I can move it around and, and uh, purge it out before I hook it up. I wish I could have got the curvature out of this thing. That way I'd avoid all the jokes. But don't go there. I'm trying to keep this a family show. Like this. See, that's a distraction. Okay. All right, we're going to purge this thing out. I'm going to hold it up. That's the reason I put, the, uh, I put it just where I did, where I could hold it up like this. Make sure I don't trap any air in there. Argon's heavier than air, so I'm going to... Let it run for a few seconds and kind of make sure that all the air is displaced out of this thing before I attach the end to the welding machine. So I'll let it run for maybe a minute at about 20 CFH. Waste a little argon, but price of doing business. And then hook it up to the machine. And there I go. Got a little do-it-yourself argon dryer that at a glance I can tell when it turns pink and I need to... Uh, Take that stuff out and rebake it or replace it. It's reusable. You can bake it and turn it from pink to blue again and put it back in there. Save a little money. That is it for today. I really appreciate you watching. Visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.